All right, now we're going to spend a little time looking at some graphs of motion in one dimension. So there's a couple major graphs you really need to look at. One is position versus time. The second is velocity versus time. If there was only one major graph you had to look at, it would be so much easier. Because we give you two separate graphs and the information you get from them is different, it's often confusing and students often confuse what's going on with one versus the other. So hopefully we can get this straight and I would recommend copious amounts of practice to keep it in your head and get it really straight in your head. Uh, let's start with position versus time. So here we've got position on the y-axis, we've got time on the x-axis. Somebody remind me. So kind of like a, a running, you know, basic definition of slope of a graph, slope of a line. Yeah, rise over run. Or in this case, slope is change in y over change in x. In our case, in this position versus time graph, the change in y is the change in position. What is change in position called? Displacement, which we call delta x. And the change in x, in this case, change in the x-axis, is the change in time. And what is displacement over time? That's the same thing as velocity. And so when you've got a position versus time graph, the slope everywhere on this graph gives you the velocity. Uh, so if we look here, a couple questions here. First is, what is the net displacement after six seconds? So in this case, displacement is nothing more than a change in position. What was our original position? Zero. What was our position after six seconds? Negative two. What's our net displacement? Negative two. So our y-axis gives us our position. We just look at how that's changed for whatever time period we want to talk about. So second thing. Where's the velocity? Positive, negative, and zero. So in this case, again, our velocity is our slope. So the question is really saying, where's the slope? Positive, negative, and zero. So here from zero to one second, we have an uphill slope. That's a positive slope, so that's a positive velocity. From one to two seconds, we have no slope. A slope is zero, and so the velocity is zero. Our object is not moving from one to two seconds. It just parked it there for a second. So from two to three seconds, it's a downhill slope. That's a negative velocity. This object is moving backwards. So from three to four, again, zero slope, it's not moving. And from four to six, again, a negative slope, it's moving backwards and negative velocity in that case. Any questions on that? So we look at this thing, this thing, move forward, parked it, turned around and moved backwards further than where its original position was, parked it and then moved backwards again at a different velocity. All right, so the question, next one is, what is the velocity at t equals five seconds? If it's saying what is the velocity, then it really wants what is the slope here. And again, slope right at five seconds. So that's going to equal the change in y over change in x, or in this case, your displacement over time. And so in this case, our displacement, and going from negative one to negative two, so the velocity and the slope are everywhere constant between four and six. I'll just calculate the slope during that entire period. So in this case, going from negative one to negative two is a displacement of negative one. And the time from four to six is two, two whatever. I'm just going to seconds, that arbitrary units here. And so our velocity is simply negative one half, whatever units happen to be on this scale here. Cool. Last question, are there any points on this graph with a non-zero acceleration? So when I say non-zero acceleration, what do I mean? I mean, it has acceleration, so the velocity must be changing. So in this case, is there anywhere on here the velocity is changing? Well, sort of. So it's a little bit tricky, but right at that instant, the velocity is changing. One instant, your velocity, in this case, looks like a velocity of one, and the next instant, your velocity is zero. And so normally, in real, real life, we have to actually slow down if I'm moving with a positive velocity to get down to zero, and we slow down when we kind of decelerate. But in this case, it's instantaneous. That implies an acceleration that's like either infinitely positive or infinitely negative. What really should happen here, so, is this should kind of slow down gradually. So it's kind of a curve. So, but our graph didn't show that. That's what reality would be. Our graph just kind of had it instantaneous. And so the only places we'd actually see acceleration here, so acceleration on this graph would be a curve. And the only place we see it is we see infinite accelerations at every single point here where the velocity went from one to another without anything in between. Normally, we'd see that rounded off in reality. Cool.